her 9000's game room. Okay, this game's got a little bit of a special place in my heart, so I'm going to go a little bit off tangent and tell you a story with this review. I remember walking home from comprehensive school, I must have been in one of my first years there. At home I had a Mega Drive and an Amiga 500, as well as all the other usual stuff you'd find in a boys room at that time. A TV, a CD player, a poster of a good looking singer you had a crush on. I didn't really think much of school, so I'd be out of the gate the second I could. There was a system whereby we would walk the kid who lived the closest out of our group to his door, usually passing a sweet shop on the way, and then the next kid, and so on and so on. In the end, there would only be me and my friend Andrew left. Now, Andrew had almost always been in my life. The early years of gaming were mostly based around him coming to my house to play on my Spectrum and Atari 2600, or me at his playing on his Commodore 64. Now we would walk to a crossroads where my house lay down a path on the left and his was towards the right. And so we would part there. But for a solid three months I didn't go home straight away. No, I crossed over the road and went into our local co-op. This wasn't a co-op for food, like you'd find nowadays. No, it was a large store and it had all sorts of things in it. Bed sheets, toys, all manner of things. But it also had a Super Nintendo demo unit. One of those consoles under a dome with the pad sticking out so you could have a go on it. In this demo unit, they had F-Zero. No one I knew at this point owned a SNES, and no one would till the Christmas of that year. But I used to go in there every day after school and play F-Zero, basically until they got fed up of me and chased me off. So, yeah, F-Zero was the very first Super Nintendo game I ever got to sample, and I knew one thing from the first time I played it, and that was that I needed to get a Super NES. The problem was I'd only just gotten a Mega Drive for the Christmas that had just passed, so I thought asking for one that Christmas would seem a bit ungrateful. And besides, I knew my mum had already probably started buying stuff in advance. Now I was going to have to wait it out for a whole year. Christmas came and I got a lot of stuff, a bunch of Mega Drive games, but obviously I didn't get a SNES. But lots of my friends did, and I was soon visiting them and playing on their machines and enjoying it, but nobody got F-Zero. From the day they removed the demo unit from the shop, up until the next time I'd end up playing on the game which had awoken me to the wonders of the Super Nintendo, we had probably be separated by about a year and a half. I got the SNES a year after a lot of my friends, but even then I was the only one to have both a SNES and a Mega Drive. All of the others stuck firmly in one camp and defended their choice day in day out with every fibre of their being. It's probably the greatest compliment I can pay to the game to say that it was worth the wait and that it was the machine that made me buy a SNES. For those of you who haven't played it, and as a recap for others here, is a little information. F-Zero is a futuristic racing game developed by Nintendo EAD and published by Nintendo. The game was released in Japan as one of the two launch titles for the machine. The game takes place in the year 2560 and can be best thought of as a sort of futuristic Formula One, where you can choose to play as one of four characters, each of them having their own particular hover car. The player then races against computer controlled opponents in 15 tracks divided into three leagues. F-Zero is acknowledged by critics to be the game that set a standard for the racing genre and the creation of the futuristic subgenre. F-Zero wasn't just a good game though, it was an early example of what the SNES could do with the use of the graphical mode called Mode 7. This graphics rendering technique was an innovative technological achievement It helped show that the SNES could perform certain tricks which other consoles would struggle with. Mode 7 is a graphics mode on the Super NES that allows a background layer to be rotated and scaled on a scan line by scan line basis to create many different effects. This game showed that the SNES wasn't just a powered up console, it was a new machine which had brought new technology and innovation to the table with it. The graphics, the sound, the sense of speed, everything in this game seemed to be designed to get you hyped, to get you playing filled with excitement, not just for the game, but for the very future of this machine, and this is something I feel it did well. It was an easy game to pick up, but a hard one to master. Even to this day, there are races on this game which will make you feel like your blood is boiling like you're travelling at 500 miles per hour, it's simply that good. I'd give this game a solid 9 out of 10, and I've seen it sell for around the 10 quid mark online for a loose car, although it can go for more. 
If you own a SNES and you don't own it, buy it. I hate the fact that since the Cube version, Nintendo just seemed to have left this game series to rot. The only reminder being the fact that you could buy it on the Virtual Console and it's appeared on the Switch's online service. Some would say that Wipeout outdid it, but while I love Wipeout as well, I think there's always room for more F-Zero. Okay, that's Kerr9000 signing off, saying keep on gaming!